so welcome to faith-based tech connections i want to thank everybody for being here today and i know some people may have to leave so this is being recorded and it'll be emailed to everyone who's registered within 48 hours do me a favor um, please remain on mute um, if you would like to make a response to a question or make a comment use the reaction button down at the side and some people like i don't have time to find that i'm just ready to tell you so you can wave at me if you would like you know wave your hand if you like to um, ask a question or make a comment but if you can try to keep yourselves on mute so i have some special guests here today i hope they pop up because everybody's busy but gail carpenter she's the chief business development officer See, last week you all asked about some products that we don't have in our catalog and Gail is the person to tell because she gets them here so we definitely want to hear from her Stephen Jackson our senior content content producer um, should be here if he, he can't be, be here today he'll be here next week um, next month excuse me Alicia Saddam she's supposed to be here Alicia I spelled your last name wrong but she's our accountant Part of our account management group that basically is a name for customer service alicia is the person you want to get to know but i want to do something i got a couple announcements i want to ask you to do me a favor if you're having an event that's coming up a conference or anything invite us to speak invite TechSoup to speak. um sherry excuse me shannon cherry is over our communications and events you can um, copy down her email i'll put it in the chat room if you cannot remember shannon because i know you're seeing me a lot then you can email me any events that you're having um even this if it's a sponsorship so just email us and let us know i would love for you to become a featured speaker i know i mentioned that but i don't like to be the one speaking all the time and I would love if you have something to share, something that you're doing that's working, or even maybe challenges that you're having and other people need to hear about it because it's gonna help them. That's what we're here for, to help each other. Email me at asimons at techsoup.org. I would love for you to become a feature speaker, especially next month, because next month we're gonna be talking about strategies that you are using for 2022. I want you to share the knowledge and i want you to do me a favor i want you to help me choose a name or us choose a name for this group i got a survey a little later so i would love for you to help me choose the name of this group um we go back and forth with tech soup um faith faith based tech connections or faith-based chat so i'm going to put a poll up here and you can help choose the name and then that'll be it and then i won't have to go back and forth because i changed it to faith-based leaders one time and then it was faith-based tech connection i want to know what you think um we didn't want to call it pastors chat because everybody's not a pastor and, and everybody has different titles so uh whatever name that you guys choose that's what we're going to stick to the last time i had a small um group that chose and I'm going to see where we're at. We're almost done. 63% is saying faith-based tech connections. Love it. Uh, and I'll show you in just a moment. I'm going to end the poll in just a moment. But I want to talk about the things that you brought up. I'm going to open my other laptop. Our survey last month, when you fill out the survey, I was so, so, ver first of all, thankful that you took the time to fill out the survey. I'm going to end this poll. And then I'll share the results. So it's going to be faith-based tech connections. Thank you very much. That is that is it. Okay, faith-based tech connections. So um, last month when I asked you to fill out the survey, there were a, a lot of great questions that people asked. And again, I wanted us to continue the conversation. Did you guys enjoy the conversation last month? Put a one in the chat room because there was so much information that was giving out and even myself i was just blown away by the feedback that you all gave to each other and by the camaraderie thank you angie for being here it's your first time welcome 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 awesome a lot of first timers cynthia first time thank you so much so you were invited that means the word is getting out but, oh chuck well welcome this is great mike first time good i love it i love it i love it that means you're sharing francis first time iphone first time i got an iphone too my first time having an iphone <laughs> but thank you all so much so i want to 
get to one of the common things that somebody asked, and I believe I have it here. I'm gonna end that. There was, I put it in my poll question because I wanted you guys to, to see. Okay, share the results. All right, this is one of the common questions. How are other leaders using software to serve their communities? Now, there's no way for you to answer so here on this poll, but I wanted you to see it in on the screen. How are you as a leader using software to serve your communities? So what I would like for you to do is use the raise your hand button, unmute yourself and comment, or you can, as I said, wave because some people, you know, are not on, are, um, don't, can't find the unmute button not the unmute button, the reaction button. So I would like for you to share. What are you doing? Great, this is great. I'm, I'm glad a lot of first timers here. I hear somebody unmuting themselves. Who would like to share? What are you doing? Okay, great, Ed Edwina, please unmute yourself. Thank you. Uh, I just- Uh-oh, start, start, start over again. Unmute yourself again. Yeah. I just came off of a call that's looking at how we're updating and improving our, both our public website and we are a member organization. So our internal website, plus we have a conference center and how we have another website, but how they're all connecting and the whole new look and trying to make it um, more, well, less dense than our own website, I'll be polite and say. <laughs> use that word but that that's what we're doing really working really hard on that right now and as I said I just came off a call with the uh, website developers and other people from my organization and that was very interesting in fact one person who's supposed to be here now and is coming is late because she had some questions she's the techie person okay thank you for sharing that your website because your website is what they're gonna to go to. It's like your new business card. It's the face of your organization now. I see we're, we are already ready seeing results uh, from our new external website of people wanting to use our space for meetings and retreats and you know that kind of stuff. Very good. So that's a, a stream of income that's coming in and they're using their websites to do that. Um, I'm going to mute you for a quick second. I see Stephen here. Welcome, Stephen. Would you introduce yourself to everybody? Sure. Sorry I'm late, folks. My name is Stephen Jackson. I'm the senior content producer at TechSoup. Uh, so I work in the marketing department and um, sort of have my hands in a lot of different things. And, uh, I'm the editor in chief of our blog, um, lead our content and video teams. I uh, send out the Buy the Cup newsletter, which some of you may receive. Um, that's uh, my uh, thing. Uh, and I also help with content on many different websites across the TechSoup brand um, and work with kind of most of the people here at TechSoup who help make all of our programs a reality. Awesome. Nice Thank to meet you all. Thanks for taking this time to uh, talk about your tech needs and how we can how we can help you better. I, I'm also looking forward to hearing more from you folks about what you need, um, because as I'm creating content, it's really important for me uh, to be uh, reactive and, and empathetic to everything that's going on out in the real world community. So thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. Oh, I see lots of hands raised. Is Gail here? Gail Carpentier. Oh, Gail, would you unmute yourself and introduce yourself and then I'll get to everybody. Hi, guys. My name is Gail Carpentier. I've had the pleasure of being part of TechSoup as their chief business development officer since 2001. And so pretty much any of the companies that have been added to the site to help you all are companies I've had the pleasure of working directly with. And there's a huge team that backs that up to make sure those relationships remain robust and exciting. And I'm just pleased, Aretha, that you invited me here today so I can hear directly from these good folks to see how else we can help them. So if you guys uh, have any things that you want me to consider, uh, drop them into chat, or else you can also go to the TechSoup main site. In the forums, there's a uh, group called the Technology Wishlist that I moderate. So if there's ever a, hey, 
maybe they could get this, or maybe they don't know that we really need this. Please share those with me because that is really the fastest way I can help all of you. So delighted to meet you all today. Thanks, Aretha. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to go in this order. I see hands raised, Sister Joanne, then Eric, and then somebody that has a name owner, and then we'll go by that. Okay, Sister Joanne, please unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Good to see you again. Um, what I do after each of these conferences is I go back to our website. I'm affiliated with a girls' academy, uh, 6 through 12 whose uh, purpose is to um, make women good leaders. And I go to see, do we have what you said we should? Then I get lost. And I think that's what I find in a lot of websites that no matter how simple I state things, I can't find it on the website. And it's frustrating and then you you know so i think what i'm looking for is how to make our school website a little bit more user friendly because i can't find it i know it's there the information but i can't find it yeah mm -hmm. you know we have um we have some great concept i it, it, we have we, TechSoup does all this different stuff so it's kind of hard for people ironically to navigate through our site sometimes to find like all the things that we can offer but we have a website consultation service. Um, and uh, for all of you folks who do have some website questions, um, I look, uh, Alicia uh, dropped that in the chat. Uh, uh, we, it really, it's, it's very uh, user friendly working. to get to and to understand, and, and, and the people on the that's team working. are really great. Um, but so that's one way to help. But I, you know, if you yeah. have a question about, uh, so anyway. The idea of building websites or anything. I'm also help to, happy to kind of field those questions here today. Um, I'm also going to drop a couple other uh, blogs and things like that that we created in the chat that kind of takes you through different website um, sort of uh, planning and development uh, items. So uh, I, I'll share those resources too, but I'm happy to answer any questions on the fly you may have to the best of my ability. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen. Um, Eric. Yes, I, I belong to a church in downtown Baltimore, and we have a number of groups that like to do surveys of the congregation to see the sense the pulse or to figure out, you know, what they think of things. So we've been using Survey Monkey, free of charge, but it's but it's it has limitations. Mm -hmm. So um, and we're not with a tight budget. We're not ready to buy on an annual you know, a subscription. So I'm looking for um, some suggestions for surveys. Wow, any, any suggestions that you all are using? I think surveys are great. It's great to figure out what your members um, need. Anybody using surveys that wanna share with them? Okay, so you can let us know in a moment. Um, someone has the name owner, uh, you can unmute yourself. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Mary from um, Menominee, Michigan. Um, I'm a bookkeeper for the school here at. Is she on Tech Soup? Huh? Uh, Mike, I got it. So it's okay, Scott. You keep coming on mute, and I I, I muted you. That's this navigating, muting people. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm from St. Paul, St. John Paul II Catholic Academy. I'm also the bookkeeper for um, one of our churches. Um, but I also do a little dibble and dabbles as in, you know, trying to keep everything in tech related around, you know, um, you know, new software, new this and what's, you know, how to work it and stuff like that. Um, so right now, I forgot what the question originally you had, but I, I can imagine. So people were asking, what are they using to help with their community? What kind of technology are you using to help with the community? Oh, yeah. Um, with our community, um, we just started up a new program 
for our tuition assistance program or, you know, tuition to keep our tuition together, but also to get all our um, things. And we're using fax right now. Um, other things that we do is like um, working with Microsoft and Google. And I know those two don't play well together with each other. And so, but sometimes you just need to use Microsoft and sometimes you just need to use Google. So, you know, we kind of do a lot of both. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for sharing. Um, person with the iPhone. Yes, my name is Marcia Matoso. Are you with me? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. My name is Marcia Matoso and I run a food bank in Salem, Oregon. And we're serving about four to 5,000 people per month. But I would, I would like to, to increase our uh, visibility. What, right now, we, I use Facebook, I use our website. Our website is okay. In fact, we just had a donor who went to our website and they didn't know about us and were interested. In, and because of that, we're gonna receive a, a truck, full truck, semi-truck with donations. So I think it is okay, but I'd like to improve that. And also uh, donor management, if you have any um, tips about it. Okay, excellent. I, I like that. And, and there's lots of, chats going on here alicia's putting links in here gail putting links in here and anyone that wants to give information how you're reaching out to your donors let us know alicia oh you can unmute yourself hi uh, i'm alicia i work for the society of st vincent de paul in san mateo county we're located in the san francisco bay area um i took on the tech role about a couple of years ago right at the start of the pandemic and it was great to have TechSoup as a resource because um, I had a aging on-premise server. I had a very expensive email um, server. So we were able to consult with TechSoup and get the hardware. This was also at the time when Win7 was transitioning to Win10 and they were cutting off support. So we were able to use the bulk discount rates to get Win10 uh, computers with some great solid state drives for all of our team. We were able to purchase laptops so that we could work remotely during the pandemic. We were able to transition our on-premise server using the Microsoft connection and the Azure credits to move to Microsoft 365. So we were able to do this all in a year, uh, basically creating a virtual um, infrastructure so that our team could work remotely and do campaigns. Right now, um, we're mostly um, interested in, we're with Salesforce for our donor management. We're kind of curious if you have any connections or advice there. Um, also, our website's doing pretty good, but what we're experiencing now is with the increase in traffic, we have lots of um, spam security risks. Uh, we're with Bluehost, but we're kind of interested in once you start getting that traffic, how do we keep our website from getting hacked? So um, just kind of wanted to make it accessible, but also secure. That's that's how we're doing right now. Thanks. Very good. Lots of good questions in there. And I know Gail has put some links in there for donor management, but security, that's another big topic. I would like to know what kind of security we do have a vast and other security here at TechSoup, but I would like to know what everybody else is using after we hear from James. Hi, James, you can unmute yourself. Hey, everybody. Hey. So uh, what I'm doing uh oh james we, we lost you okay we're gonna go to jared while um james he may be having some technical difficulty we're gonna go to jared you can unmute yourself yes thanks um i'm it director for back-to-back -back ministries near cincinnati ohio we do Global orphan care, community development, uh, we're going to phone roll families, uh, some in Cincinnati, but the rest is a lot um, internationally working with domestic partners uh, overseas, um, Haiti, uh, Mexico, and then other locations. Uh, a lot of what I've been doing is uh, around areas of security, uh, infrastructure where Google Shops, I use Google Workspace, um, doing a lot of integration though, using our ERP uh, CRM system and integrating that with Google. So uh, making use of the Google context directory to be populated by our CRM, which makes it a whole lot more helpful. 
um, makes it a little more HR friendly. You can see your reporting um, and structure there. Uh, we really have dove into learning management systems as well. We use that internally and then also externally. And so I've had a um, online storefront uh, called Trauma Free World um, and using that as a storefront for uh, other partners that are in that space to come in and make use of the training that we're doing. Uh, regarding security, email, spamming, I just think every organization needs to have a DMARC policy and that is just setting up some DNS records on your domain. Um, it is a little bit of a process. It's not a one-time fix, but uh, getting a partner in there, getting someone that has some know-how just to do uh, a few records at your domain level just helps uh, bring your email system under control so much more and disallows people from spoofing your domain identity. Jerry, I would love if you would be a featured speaker for next month. <laughs> no, seriously, I mean, I, I, I would take at least three of you or two or three of you because you just said a lot and a lot of what you said, everybody couldn't absorb. So they need to, you know, you break it down a little bit more. Some people got it and, you know, but some people like need to maybe see it visual. So I would love if you would be a featured speaker. Would you, um, would you email me? Would you? Email me. Sure. Happy to follow up with you on that. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Happy Great. to consider that. Thanks. On the, sec on the security piece, I, I, I dropped the link uh, to all of our security tag um, content on the TechSoup blog. There's a lot of great stuff in there. I also highlighted um, one particular blog that features a tool that we offer. Um, it's actually a training program called Know Before. And some folks in the IT community will already be uh, familiar with this, but the, the one piece I'm going to say is um, there are tons of, you know, like tools and um, endpoint protection and all of that kind of, the, all of the security sort of infrastructure, these sort of like hard tools. But um, the majority of, you know, IT threats start with phishing or spear phishing campaigns where essentially it's somebody who is gaining privileged access that they shouldn't. Right. And so you can have all of the security um, infrastructure in the world, but if what, but, but a human error can, can break through all of it. Right. So uh, there, and hackers typically use this thing called social engineering where they, where, where they know that they need to, um, they, they, they can actually play upon certain um, biases that you already have uh, certain, such as like, you're going to respond to an email that's from uh, the head of your organization and things like that. And so they can kind of identify people, manipulate those, um, manipulate or socially engineer people to provide privileged access. Um, so the Know Before program actually allows you to um, send out a training program for your staff. And then it also runs sort of secret fake phishing campaigns to see if people are actually, you know, like following the best practices or not. So there's a lot of technical stuff but there's also the training portion that's super important for like a full security package today. Wow, thank you, Stephen, for that. And I see Kevin Mulhall um, ch chimed in the chat room. Kevin, I need you on a webinar with me. Thank you so much. Hi, Mr. Williams, how are you? Thank you for joining us. Hi, how's everybody? Great, thank you. So I'm a first timer, just learned of TechSoup, oh, probably about 36 hours ago. Wow. Um, Welcome. So uh, I, I was just recently uh, appointed uh, the uh, chairperson for uh, the laity organization of my church's denomination, um, tasked with the mission of um, enhancing our communications. Right now, we're, we're at a stage where we don't even collect email addresses from folks. So. Uh, we're starting um, really basic, uh, so I've got a couple of campaigns going on in order to capture that. Uh, but I started looking uh, at a campaign for, um, you know, how do I bring everyone together? And I was looking at the Google Workspace for nonprofits, and that's what sort of led me here. And where when I when I saw the Google Nonspace or the Google Workspace for nonprofits. I thought I had tapped into something that I wanted to say Eureka, but then when it led me here, 
I don't even know what to use as an exclamation anymore. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, being here further down the road. And Jared, yeah, I'd love to have you as a speaker next month so that I can hear more about that topic matter. So we're just looking at a bunch of things, uh, membership management system, uh, we're looking at email. We're looking at I'm my my I guess my uh, my mission is to bring the uh, the laity uh, part of the of the denomination into the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And right now, I think we're still in the Pony Express phase. Wow, you're not alone. I'm sure there's some other people probably feel the same way on here. I see a lot of heads nodding. So you're not alone. Thank you for sharing that. And welcome, come back again next month, January 19th. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia, welcome. Hello, and thank you for having us and for having me. I'm Cynthia, I'm with Exalted Arts, and um, I this is my first time. I'm happy to be here and with everything that I have heard thus far, and it's just getting started, I know this is the right place for me. Um, I lead a faith-based theater company, by the way. But to answer your question, um, we just signed up with Network for Good. You were asking how are we communicating with our donors and, and all of our you know constituency, and I absolutely love it. Um, they have a texting feature, video features, you can do personalized emails, they have templates, and for a small organization like ourselves, it is wonderful. I, I am not being paid <laughs> to say any of this by Network for Good, but um, if I had known about it, uh, Previously, it would have been, I, I, I think we would have been that much further along, but I'm happy that I found it at the time that we did. And so far, it's just working wonderfully. And I just wanted to let you know, thank you. Yeah, thank you for sharing that Network for Good is awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And as you see, there are lots of pieces that she mentioned. Alicia, uh, Saddam, I didn't get a chance to introduce you, but I know you're in the chat room. Would you come <sighs> on say hello? If you don't want to come on, come on camera, it's okay. No, okay. Um, so someone said, can this be a quarterly gathering? It's actually a monthly gathering. We did a little survey and people said they'd like to do it once a month. So um, lots of great comments in the chat room. Jared said, password management is a key area of training and empowerment for staff to handle content in their space of work, which is so true. So, so true. Eric, <laughs> Eric says even better. Okay, some one of the other questions that was asked from the meeting last night last month. I would like to know if there are others who are not comfortable placing their members' information in the cloud. Let's talk about the cloud because that's where we are right now. We're in the cloud right now. Any any comments? I don't know who put that comment because your surveys are anonymous. But any comments on how you feel about moving to the cloud? Uh, Phil Williams, I see you unmuted. Did you want to say something? No. Okay. So Jared, um, I think no. Was it James? Was it James that we couldn't hear before? And I see you, Cynthia and, and Sister Joanne. Just a moment. James, are you able to come back on? No. Okay. Oh, yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you good. Okay. Great. Uh, so I. Um, help with a currently with a foster care organization that provides um that pretty much works with a bunch of different churches in the state of virginia to provide services to families in need specifically families that are taking in um, orphans and um are doing foster care and um we use salesforce for our crm i've been building it out for the past year and it's going really well uh, it takes a long time to do it right. So just a word for anybody who's thinking about using Salesforce, it is really worth it, but you probably have to spend a long time developing it to match what you, the way that you want to make it. And uh, we're using Haymarket for our text message system. And we actually figured out a way to not have to use MailChimp. We just use Salesforce for our emails by adding in an unsubscribe code into our emails and sending them directly so that we can use better mail merge uh, options and actually use the data from our CRM. So that's pretty cool. 
uh, the one thing that I'm trying to figure out how to do better is manage uh, interns and uh, people that may go through our program that also want to be a part of the learning process. So like, for instance, if we have a program where we're where the people who are our clients are also trying to learn the technology that we're using, uh, is there a good kind of a technology for that, like a training type of technology or anything that helps manage internships and uh, externships? Wow. If anybody's using that, please put the links in the chat or feel free to unmute yourself to um, to share with James. Thank you so much, James, for that. Um, John, would you like to comment? And then I'll go to Sister Joanne. Um, I, I, I would say first, I'm kind of in the journey that James is on. I'm implementing Salesforce for our group as well. And it is a lot of work and it, it takes, you know, it takes investment of time and, and energy to, to kind of get it there. But I'm excited for the journey. And certainly I would love to see even if this group had like some uh, little special interest chapters that could focus in on things like Salesforce or Microsoft Teams or tools that people use. I think um, the second thing I wanted to address, you asked if um, how I felt about putting data in the cloud. And I think two things, I'm old school. I've, I've been doing IT since we used to call it data processing. So I've been doing it about 50 years. And in the process of doing those 50 years, um, I always have this little sign that says, people who fail to back up and live to talk about it. And the cloud <laughs> makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. I think people don't recognize how valuable the cloud can be. And in many ways, the people who are securing your data on the cloud are doing a much better job of securing your data than you will do on your desktop or on your little laptop. The, the ones, you know, I get people who come to me all the time. It's like, uh, my, my laptop's not working, Mr. Epps, what do I do now? It's kind of like, start over. I mean, you know, you didn't back it up. You never, you never backed up the data. So you just got to kind of, so I, I, I think you have to be willing to um, learn how to use it properly. And the comments that came up earlier about security and know before, I think are really important because the weakest link in your company is where the problem's gonna come from more than somebody outside. They're gonna click on something and they're gonna be the ones who actually give away your data. It's gonna be your own people. So it's not, I don't blame the cloud, I blame people. Uh, and then I, I just want to say, um, without any question, this is one of the best things I've ever been a part of. And I'm not getting paid either, Cynthia, to say that. But just being a part of this group, I've worked with churches for 30 years. I mean, literally, you know, and I've, I've helped many churches get their little, uh, you know, member information systems in place. And I got to say, having a forum like this where we can come together and talk is great. And then lastly, I don't think I'm, I'm happy to be a speaker if I can be, if I can help. But I also would love to hear some people who are trying, you know, the term that I hear a little bit that I've got a master's workflow, just how do we make the technology do more work so that we do less work? And I think we need guidance in that area to even, I don't think if you don't know what the possibilities are, then you can't build toward it. So if we can um, in-house, uh, if you guys have some people in TechSoup, or if within this group, there are some people who would be willing to talk about workflow projects where they've taken some of the work they, they have and automated it and made it easier and make things happen. I really think that would be really valuable for this group. And thank you very much for this. Thank you for everything you just said. Um, really means a lot to me that you think that this is great to be a part of. Excuse me, I'm getting emotional. Sorry about that. I, um, I was in IT in the Navy and people don't realize stuff has been in the clouds for years. I spent 20 years in the Navy as an IT. So the cloud is not new, it's just new to us. 
And so it's something that we definitely have to um, be prepared for. And someone mentioned that I mentioned that the next event is going to be on January 19th and it's not on the calendar. Correct. It's not on the calendar. Um, there's a process that, that it goes to. It should be on the calendar within the next few days um, because I just came up with that date earlier today. So it has to go through different departments. All right, James, you can unmute yourself. Cool. I just wanted to respond and say uh, thanks for that information. And also, um, yeah, I like I like the idea because Salesforce is such a big thing with nonprofits. Like if, if you guys had something specifically about that or a group where we could all kind of get together and trade, share our trade secrets and ways that we do our build outs, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but also uh, as far as um, with uh, putting stuff in the cloud, I think anybody who's like leery about it should just understand that the one thing that's super important is you should be using like Stripe or like some type of donor management, essentially CVV codes. And you never have to type that in, right? The, the person who's giving you the money is typing it in and then it goes and then it never goes into your database ever. So that you don't have to worry about that security, you know? So if you are typing that stuff in somewhere, then you have to probably figure something out because that's, that's a, kind of just the idea behind why you use Stripe and all those other things, because then you, they're liable, not you. Mm, very good, very good. Thank you so much. Um, wow, so lots of comments in the chat room going on. Uh, as you see, uh, people are connecting. I love it. Uh, people are connecting. I love it. Thank you, Mo. Say, oh yeah, Rita, I love it. Cloud backups. Um, lots of, I met Grace Hopper when I started program training. Okay, great. Lots of comments. Um, you guys definitely connect with each other. If you want to form small groups um, outside of TechSoup, uh, do that. If you want us to try to navigate it, send me an email, A Simons at TechSoup. I want to leave with this one last question, which I think is important. Every question is important, but um, someone left a comment in the survey that says they want to know about experiences that churches are having with various live streaming um services uh what kind of hardware you use them for setup or software whatever they want to know give us give them some examples of how you broadcast your church services it says across a broad altar area i don't know what that means you probably know what that means any comments on that pastors leaders in the um faith-based community what do you use hi this is this is keith um and i can answer some of that um okay. I mean, I am going to get our tech guy to be a part of these um, as well, hopefully in the future. Um, he, because he's, uh, uh, we were very fortunate to have someone who's very tech savvy. So when the pandemic hit, we were able to do live stream. Uh, my wife and I became pastors here kind of in the middle of that. Um, so we do, um, we, we do it through YouTube. Um, we live stream through YouTube. And um, we send out a link um, that only goes, our church didn't want a lot of things publicized, like a public link um, to just sort of, um, and I know various churches do it different ways, um, but they just didn't want a lot of the private information to go out like uh, prayer concerns and things like that. So we have a YouTube link uh, that we send out to people who want to be on that um, link. Um, and we send that out right before uh, we're going to go live. Um, and so then we live stream that way. There's usually just a few people in the um, sanctuary, um, but we did, um, our numbers went down a little bit. So we are now doing both, doing a hybrid. Um, and we will continue to live stream. Um, even with people uh, coming, because uh, we have noticed that even though our link was not public, uh, people would share the link with family and friends. And our church, which is a small church, actually has grown um, during the pandemic um, because people um, shared the link. And, um, and what it does is it allows people to... I guess, sort of see what's going on, get a feel of what's going on. And somehow, strangely, 
even though it's nice when we can all be together, somehow uh, people still are able to connect to each other via technology, which I just find remarkable. And in spiritual terms, uh, it's just another moving of, of God's spirit. Yeah. So, I love that. I agree. Anybody else want to share what they're doing, how they're doing? Um, Mike says, I don't have a camera or a mic on this computer, but user training is my biggest headache. The shortage of staff for our church is causing us to hire and take volunteers that have less and less computer skills than in the past, especially since COVID hit. What end user services does TechSoup offer? So at least I think Alicia will put an a email in the chat room for the services that TechSoup offers. Anybody else want to share how they're um, what they're using to stream? I love that you you share the private YouTube link and then they're sharing with everybody else. Um, what um, are, this is uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Go ahead. Tony Trueheart and um, we also um, started with live streaming and we were using a combination of Zoom for our Sunday school classes that started with what the gentleman just said, you know, it went, went out to our members, but then they began sharing it with others. So now we have people joining our Sunday school classes that are from all over the place and far beyond, you know, our reach was before. And then as far as our worship services, when we came back into the sanctuary, we continue to do a hybrid of that, but we used um, Facebook Live because we found that a lot of our folks were more familiar with that and uh, already had that set up on either a tablet or their phone or or a laptop, particularly some of our older members who were less, you know, tech savvy. So that seems to work, and you know, we're just going to continue to stick with that. Okay, awesome. Thanks for sharing that. Thank you. I see a comment in the section um, from Mo. He said he just retired from the Navy. Thank you for your service. And he's taking on an existing nonprofit, but really a major restart in a short period of time. What products would you recommend out of the gate to jumpstart fundraising? He doesn't have a staff, just a couple of volunteers. So uh, something for a novice. So I, I think Mo, it depends on what type of nonprofit you have that would decide on what type of fundraising that you would use. Um, can you can you share? You want to come off mute and share with us? Mo, are you still there? Yeah, I'm sorry. I need to unmute myself, don't I? Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Could could you repeat that? So you you said you want to know what kind of fundraising can you do to jumpstart? What, what, what type of nonprofit is it? And that might help give us an idea to suggest what type of fundraising you might do. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. I guess I could put my camera on too there. I apologize. Um, so Aretha, first of all, it's great to have a fellow Navy veteran online. Yes. No wonder why you're so successful. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons, but um, so I just retired from uh, 28 years working with the Navy and the Marine Corps as a chaplain. About a third of that was with Marines, the rest was on the blue side. Um, I just took over a, uh, a camp that is an outreach to veterans, backpacking, fishing, hunting. And it's, uh, it's kind of been like more of a covert ministry, but it's becoming a faith-based nonprofit as of uh, about two weeks from now. And so um, it's small. It focuses on veterans, uh, retreats, backpacking, hunting, and we're, we're uh, adding a marriage retreat component. Right now it's focused on one site in Eastern Oregon, but the vision is to start doing things in various sites and really be more of a director and not a, a program manager of a single site. Uh, does that give you enough information? It does, and somebody else can chime in, but as you were talking, I was thinking first, um, think about write down all the things that you need. Um, I'm sure you probably already have those things and then how much it's gonna cost. And so say if you're having a retreat and you need food, first thing I would do is find out who, who is the nearest um, grocery store and find out how you can get a sponsorship from them. It could be in the form of money or it could be in the form of gift card. So it's gonna be based on the needs that you have. And I could probably go down the list depending on what needs you have. But if it's a strictly money, then I probably would start 
within um, 50 mile radius of where you are, um, corporations, doctors, lawyers, friends, families, all people you know and have relationships with until you build it up where your 990 can show that you're having some success and then you can start going after those major grants. Okay. Anybody else want to chime in? No? Okay. Um, this has been amazing. Um, I'm going to, first of all, remind you again that if you have an event and you would like a tech soup to come and speak at any of your events, email Shannon Curry or myself and I can get it to Shannon. Um, Shannon's uh, email is scherry. I said Shannon Curry. I'm <laughs> thinking about Steve Curry. Shannon Cherry, S Cherry at TechSoup.org. We would love to come to any events, even if you have a, a hybrid. We talk on uh, Facebook or Zoom, what, whatever events that you're having. We would love to share about more of how TechSoup and technology can help your nonprofits or other sister organizations that you have. Um, I want to thank Stephen Jackson for being here. I want to thank Alicia Saddam for being here. I want to thank Gail Carpenter for being here. I want to thank all of you for being here. This has been amazing. And it just takes my breath away, first of all, to see your faces, because I know we're not face-to-face -face all the time, but seeing your faces, I can feel your energy through your smiles. And, you know, just, just seeing your face, it lights up my day. But I want to leave the last uh, five or 10 minutes for you to open up if you have any comments, um, any other suggestion. When you close the window, a, a survey is gonna pop up. So please fill out the survey, let us know more of what you wanna talk about. The list was a lot longer. So there was a lot more that we could say, but we value your time. We wanna keep it to 45 minutes to an hour, but I'm just gonna open it up to see if anybody have any comments or anything you would like to say before we say goodbye. Um, I and I am going to jump in just a moment. Uh, if there are any comments specifically or questions for me, I'm happy to stay on. Otherwise, thank you for all the great work you do. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you, Stephen. Okay. All right. Take care. Anybody else have any comments? Yes, Gail. Hey guys, thank you so much. I have been furiously jotting down the requests that you've made in chat and what I've been listening to. So, um, you know, just to share with you, I am a member of my own parish council. So I share a tremendous amount of synergy with all of you guys. And I know that we moved from um, in, when nobody could meet here in the Bay Area. And we also used Facebook and continue to use that for the 930 service to be able to reach more people. And what we find is that people that had been part of the community had left are now re-engaging. And so, you know, with the one bit of advice I'd give you is pull up your records from wherever anybody has ever been and remind them that they can find you online because people, you know, need the sense of connection as Aretha was saying, to be able to, you know, even if you're not going to be in the same building, you can at least be part of that same spirit of, of community. So just I'm looking forward to the next meeting. And if anybody needs to reach me directly, um, having been here this long, it's just Gail, G-A-Y-L-E at techsoup.org. And I'm going to jump off to Aretha, but I know you're going to send us the notes in the chat, right? Yes, yes. All right, Thank guys. You. Good meeting you all. Take care. Thank you so much, Gail. Um, again, uh, this is being recorded. It'll be sent to everybody via email. If you were sent the link and you did not register, then you can look at TechSoup's YouTube channel in a couple of days. It'll be there. Again, my email is asimons at techsoup.org. I'm going to also let you have the floor if anybody have any comments or any questions. And by the way, Gail, if you need something added to the TechSoup product catalog, Gail is the person to make it happen. Anybody have any comments? I, I did have one question, if I may, uh, because I have to make a presentation to our executive board. And one thing that I searched on the website uh, was to find something that says, who are we? <laughs> so that I can share with them, this is TechSoup and this is what they're all about. Uh, but I, I, I did not find that. So maybe you can help me, point me in the right direction for that. Okay, Alicia will put a link in there about TechSoup and how to join. Very good, very good observation. And hey, we all need somebody to remind us, hey, I can't find this button, I can't see this, and this is what we're here for. Thank you so much. 
um, Mr. Williams. Uh, anyone else? Comments? No? Okay. Well, thank you all for your time today. This has energized me. I came in feeling some kind of way, but we can't let that stop the show. And, you know, you guys brought that level of energy up and the love. I could feel it through the screen. So thank you so much. Have an amazing day. We're going to be sending you an email about the next event. I'm looking for my feature speakers. So I would love for you to email me and let me know that you would like to be a, speaker, a featured speaker. Don't, don't think that you have to be an expert. A featured speaker is really sharing. Um, could be their problems, could be their successes. We People need to hear from you. Everybody that spoke today, you don't know how much you help somebody else. So thank you again. Have a great day, everybody. Make sure you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Miss Aretha. It was great. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. And thank you for all the comments in the comment section. Bye-bye.